this video, I'm going to teach you how to DIY an 18650 1S Lion battery pack for your FPV drone with all of this covered, including a mini easy solder tutorial. Then we will fly it and see how long we can rip one continuous pack on my three inch 1S right here. I've been inspired to get a Lion pack for ages now after seeing these legends ripping super long 1S nano drones. It just seems so fun and honestly practical for long range and cinematic flying when you don't need crazy top end punch. But when I searched for 18650 1S packs just to buy, to plug into my drone and go fly, I couldn't find anything. You can't really buy these things as 1S packs. They come in like 2S and up, but I wanted to rip this on the 1S. So I looked up how to make my own. And while yes, there are tutorials out there, I figured I would make one dedicated to people like me who are trying to specifically do this for 1S whoops. Cause I was really intimidated by this. And honestly, if you know just basic soldering, it's a lot easier than you might expect. So just skip to these timestamps if you wanna just get right into the action and see exactly what you need to do to get this battery functional. But if you watch the whole video, it really helps me out and I appreciate it. So what kind of battery do you get? Cause there's like infinite types of 18650s. Well, the main thing is the discharge rating. You want something that has a high continuous discharge rating because most 18650s are not going to be rated for the amount of current that our drones are going to be pulling. I got this battery from Pyrodrone. It's got 30 amp continuous US discharge rating, which will be fine more than enough for what we're gonna do with this 1S. The actual milliamp hour rating doesn't matter so long as your drone can carry the weight. You're also gonna need wires. I'm using 22 AWG wires that I pulled off of another build that I had that I wasn't using that had an XT30, but you can buy them on Amazon. You're probably not going to wanna go bigger than 22 because you'll see why the connector, if you use BT 2.0 is very thin. Lastly, you'll need the actual connector for the battery to plug into the drone. So I'm using BT 2.0, which is fine for whoops. You can buy a little pack like this on Amazon it was like eight bucks for a bunch of these connectors, male and female. And I'll show you exactly how to solder them onto the cables, heat shrink them and get them ready for the drone. So here's all the stuff laid out. Now let's prep the battery. First, we're gonna just scratch up the surface of the negative and positive side. This is gonna give more surface area for the solder to flow and stick. These are notoriously a little bit difficult to solder. Most people spot weld them because you're not supposed to get these batteries too hot. But if you follow these tips, it's gonna work just fine. It's not gonna get too hot. Next, we're gonna tin our wires and we're gonna tin the battery pad itself. So we're gonna do this by adding a little bit of flux to the wires. First, you're gonna have to strip them. Like probably one to two millimeters is fine for this application. On the shorter end is gonna be better. You'll see why. Then we're going to tin them by just adding a little bit of flux and then solder to the end until these wire tips get sort of shiny. Next, we're gonna do the exact same thing to the battery. So on the negative and positive side, those plates, we're going to add a little bit of no clean flux and then we're gonna apply just a little bit of blob of solder and you can see it's really on there. You wanna make sure that it's not the type that will just be off if you flick it or if it touches something this is like completely soldered welded together okay next we actually need to connect the wire to the bt 2.0 connector so the pack of connectors that you get is probably going to come with male and female we just want to grab the male ones because if you can see here We've got a female BT 2.0 port on the drone and we need a male to plug into it. Yeah, the first thing we're going to want to do as always is tin both of our components that we're going to be soldering together. So first we're going to tin the actual little prongs on the back of the BT 2.0. I just add a tiny bit of no clean flux. This is the flux that I'm using. It's from TBS. This stuff is great. And then I just apply a little bit of solder to my iron. We're at about 400 Celsius right now, maybe a little bit lower. And when I have that solder blob on my tip, oh yeah, this is the type of tip that I'm using. So then I just apply that little bit of solder that's on the tip of the iron to both sides of the connectors to just make them like a shiny silver. You can see close up here, this is about how they should look. And if you have a little bit of a blob sticking off of the side, that's actually probably preferred because we're gonna be attaching the wires from the sides of this rather than like directly from the bottom because we don't want them to touch. This will make a little bit more sense later. Next, we wanna just tin the actual wires that we're using. Like I said, I'm using 22 gauge. Then you'll notice on the bottom of the connector, you can see the positive and negative side. So we're gonna to wanna to take our black wire and that's gonna to go to the negative side. So after it's tinned, 
you're going to want to probably use a helping hand for this or something to make sure that the BT 2.0 is not going to move. And again, we're going to just apply a little bit of solder to the tip of our iron about 400 degrees C and we're going to come at it from the side. So both of these surfaces are already tinned. We should just need to touch the iron for like one second onto here. Boom. That's how you want it to look both sides and when you look at it close up obviously you do not want any of those solder blobs touching you don't want any solder beating off of the sides but this is about how it should look obviously not the cleanest but it's hard to get it perfect when it's this small and it's not going to matter because as you can see right now we add heat shrink so I don't have any red heat shrinks. So I'm using green for the red wire and black for the black wire. Literally just slide this up all the way to the end of the connector. It's gonna prevent shorts. It's gonna protect the solder joint. And now we're ready to solder the cable leads to the battery. Let's do that and go fly. So now all the hard work comes together and we actually add the wire to the battery. So you can see it's quick. I added a tiny bit of solder to the iron and then I sort of heat the blob that's already on the battery and slide the cable in and then I just added a little bit more solder on top just to get sort of like a clean shiny bubble and that's it guys I touch it to make sure it's not like too hot to make sure I didn't damage the battery but you can see even with like tweezers this is not coming off so rinse and repeat both sides, red to the positive side of the battery, black to the flat negative side. And lastly, we just wanna wrap this with heat shrink if you have it or electrical tape. Make sure both of the leads on the ends are completely covered. Make sure that there's no tension on the cables. Make sure the cables are not touching. This is how mine came up, kind of janky. I plugged it in and it works. So let's charge this up. I'm gonna just plug it into my Whoop store and go fly. I'll see you guys in the field. We are heading to the park right now. I'm not taking this super long range because, well, today it's about to rain in like an hour and it's super windy and it's gonna be like storming for like two days after this. So I wanna get this filming done. All right, you guys, it is insanely windy. So <laughs> this is ridiculous. I think I'm gonna have to try this next week, but I'm gonna go ahead and send one pack right now just to see how this thing flies in general and maybe I'll be able to keep it up in the air. For now, I just got this uh, two rubber bands on here and it's really snug in there. I think we're good. It's really, really, really like shaky. Actually, it just smoothed out a bit. So let's see, I'm at about, hover point seems to be about 40 or 50. And I accidentally left that stupid thing on the OSD. Let's see if I can remove it. Oh, this is risky. There we go, it's gone. Okay, and we're still recording. All right, cool. So we're in the air, guys. And let's just do some laps around this park. Like I said, it's kind of feeling janky, like wobbly. Uh, maybe it's because the PID tune is like thrown way off with the bigger battery. Okay guys, so this is the maiden flight, only including about a minute because it was so windy and I landed at like 3.3 volts. This was a mistake. I now know you can go way lower. 87 no stab told me that he lands at about 2.6. So I did another flight the next day, which is right after this. That one will be the real test. But I already had this edited, so I'm including it both as a lesson if you're making these and to show what flight characteristics you can get in this 25 knot wind. Oh man, okay, yeah, major sag, insane sag, you guys. It's like about to fall out of the sky. I'm gonna just drop it right down here. So about seven minutes, 50 seconds in this crazy wind. I was a little disappointed, but now that I know we can take it way lower, let's try the next day. So we are back on day two. It was supposed to be raining and super windy, but it's like the nicest day ever on the bay here. So perfect to just basically do laps back and forth all the way down to 2.6 volts. You'll notice that I started the flight at about 3.94 volts. I flew like 10 seconds before this, but the camera was stuttering. So I had to land and take off again. The stutter went away, but it did eat up a little bit of battery. All good because you're gonna be impressed with this. Gonna fast forward the flight and I'll catch you at the end where I give my closing thoughts. But damn, this went for a long time.
Ah, okay, much better. 14 minutes, that's what I was expecting. Thank you to 87 no Stab. He inspired me to make this video in the first place, so make sure to check out their channel, Super Chill Vibe. So for this flight, I ended up trying to toilet tank the battery like this instead of the long way, which I did for yesterday's flight. I feel like this was more stable, still some micro shakes and jitters, and actually a lot of jello, even with the Flywoo wide FOV adapter, which never gives me jello on lipos. So maybe there is a bit of a pin tune thing. Let me know how you would optimize this setup. But overall, I'm pretty pleased. I do think that I might be able to get close to this on a 1K milliamp hour LiPo. So I'm gonna order and test those because they're so much lighter. But this was awesome. It was less heavy feeling than I expected. I thought I would be at like 90% throttle. So yeah, this was chill for cruising. And I did brown out here when I got to whatever voltage is on the screen. It literally fell out of the sky and then recovered. So lucky that I actually brought it in when I did. Thanks for watching guys. This was a lot of fun building this. If you're intimidated to do something like this, but think it might be interesting, I encourage you to go for it because it's a lot easier than I thought if you find the right tutorials and you have the right materials. So long as you, you know, are following a guide diligently, you are dealing with batteries and you don't want to have any reverse polarity. So see you in the next one. Peace guys.